And welcome everybody, Prophets in the Spotlight. I'm your host, Brother Dan Goodwin, sitting with me, Dr. Charles Hiltabill. This is, uh, what update is this, Mrs. Goodwin? Six? 97. All right, this is update number 97. And uh, Doc, uh, I hate that we got to talk about what we're going to talk about yeah, today, but uh, yeah. we got to talk about the Shroud of Turin. And I'm going to read a verse here out of 1 Timothy. Because uh, I think the Bible is important in these subjects. Well, I think the Bible is the, and the one you're holding in your hand. That's, yeah. that's the this answer. This is the Bible, the King yeah. James Bible. Here's what yeah. it says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 4. says this, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. And, uh, Doc, I, I just don't understand it. Uh, our prophecy ministries out there, I mean, all, all the prophecy ministries are all talking about fables. If it's not sci-fi, it's fables. They're all talking about the Shroud of Turin now. They're acting like it's true, and it's been proven, and it has not been oh, proven. There's no way that it's real. No way uh, it's real. Let me ask my Mrs. Goodwin to get that up on the screen so the folks can see what we're talking about. This is one of the pictures. There's others, but this is one of the pictures they're all putting up on their, on their sites. And I'm sure that the picture you're looking at has been, I won't use the word doctored, but it's been enhanced to it where has, it looks like And that. I think they admit that the picture on the right. Because it is not. There's no way that picture has that much definition in it. Right. Now, they're claiming the picture on the left is is what it really is, but they use some kind of lighting or somehow they, they get to, this hey, is what this really hey, is. If, if I really wanted to prove something, I'd find a way to make it look that way. So let's, let's give the folks a little history about this thing here. The Shroud of Turin basically showed up and began to be talked about in the 1300s. Mm -hmm. We're talking uh, 700 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, 700 so, years ago, this thing what first... What about the 1,200 years before it? Well, that's what I've been asking. Where was this thing for 1,200 years? Oh, it was in somebody's cedar closet. Yeah. I'm that, sure, yeah. Now, I believe, and we'll get to this in a second, you, you got some understanding from your museum work. You got some mm -hmm. understanding of how stuff deteriorates. So oh, yes. we'll get to that in a second. But let me read a little bit of this from the about the Shroud of Turin. And uh, uh, also known as the Holy Shroud... Um, it's, a, it's a linen cloth bearing the, bearing the negative image of a man, or not like a negative, and that's the picture mm -hmm. on the left. I don't know if it's still on there or not, but uh, the picture on the left that's real faint, real vague, you can just see a highlight back there. They're claiming that that's uh, some kind of a negative effect or something, and that's uh, the man's well, that, face that was wrapped That's in. what you would have impressed in it would be the negative. So in order to get the picture, you've got to have a way to turn that back again toward the positive side. And that's what the right picture's about. Yeah. And, uh, of course, he's got long hair all the way down to here. I doubt it. He has a full beard when the Bible says his I beard is plucked. I thought he had plucked. it plucked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, there doesn't seem to be any scarring from a crown of thorns. Mm -hmm. You know, Isaiah says he was beaten. And un. Undeterminable as he, he yeah. was a human man. You, you wouldn't even recognize that he was a man. Yes. He was beaten so badly and mm -hmm. bruised and bloodied and buffeted. Yeah. And uh, of course, the long hair that, that came out, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the picture that everybody sees of Jesus. What, what a lie that is. Yeah. Um, so, all over the internet, all over the prophecy uh, stations now, all the, the, the big prophecy guys out there. They're on the bandwagon. They've all, they're all promoting a video, and I, and I won't mention the guy's name. I, I've probably met the guy, um, and I'm sure he means well. But Bible believers need to be smarter than this. Yeah. And, and, and God help us, the preachers out there, the prophecy leaders, the men of God, if they don't have any more discernment than this, I, it, this, this really scares We're me. We're in trouble if that's the devil. If they don't have enough discernment to say, well, look, this can't be proven, and and there's a whole bunch of red flags here that yeah, this they is might, a fraud. You know, if they did that, it, it might put them in get bad graces with somebody they don't want to be in a bad grace with. So Now they say here, first mentioned in 1354, the shroud was denounced in 1389 by the local bishop of Troyes as a fake. 
Currently, the Catholic Church neither formally endorses nor rejects, rejects the shroud. And, uh, and Pope Francis said something in 2013 about uh, 2013, which I could care less anyway. But um, this, this is, this, you see, the Catholic Church for centuries has had what they call relics. Oh, yes. Oh, they have all kinds of different things. They've got bleeding Marys and all of this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, they have things that they sell, things that they believe are holy. Hey, what you're talking about right now is something that's being sold. It is. It's a money maker. Yep. And, uh, and we're not in the business of money making. We're in the business of ministry. When I was in Israel in the Navy, 1979, I went inside the Dome of the Rock. Very few people have ever been in there. You can't go in there now. Um, the Dome of the Rock was Muslim control. And uh, I went in there and I bought some things, some trinkets in there, some, some relics. I believe they were selling pieces of the cross when I was there. <laughs> Probably. And, uh, and, and the joke yeah. is there's enough of those pieces out there to, to, to make a hundred crosses. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can buy them little, and, and you, you wear them around your neck or you, you worship them or, you know, whatever. Um, I know they're saying, well, look, we don't worship this. Yeah, but there's, there's something strange about this. There's something that's not right about trying to promote a, a linen thing. I don't believe the Lord left no. anything behind no. for us to worship. Well, in the Old Testament, they were, they, they were hung up on worshiping the snake on the cross, the brazen alt, uh, snake. And they wanted Moses' body. They, they were looking, yeah. for, even Satan was looking uh, for I mean, his that body. brazen snake, the Lord even told him, hey, grind that thing up, put it in the water, make everybody drink it. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we've been in search of Noah's Ark, and I think we found Noah's Ark. Uh, I think we've been on it. I, but God put it in a place where it's virtually inaccessible. Because if we did it, have it, everybody would worship it. Yeah, and, and let's, say, let's say people argue whether it's the real ark or not. And yeah. well, people begin to... If, they, if they'd been where we've been, it's un unmistakable. But anyway. Yeah, but what if it's been altered over the years? Yeah. And, and you get in there and you find something in it that's not supposed to be there and, and a whole new yeah. doctrine comes out. Well, see, a whole see what new happens? would come out of it. Yeah. What the Lord's, that's why people don't realize the King James Bible, the, the originals of the, the Greek and Hebrew originals, there are none. They don't well, exist. Wait a minute. I thought I heard somebody recently on, they found the, they were looking at the originals to correct our yeah, Bible. And that's what they say. And, and I'm not going to mention names here, but. Well, one, where did they find that original? One of the major prophecy networks out there had, mm -hmm. had on their Facebook page this thing about the shroud. And he was getting blasted. Half the comments or more were, well, they were saying, I don't believe this. It's nothing but fables. And he said on there, he said, well, you can't. Because they were, they were saying, look, it says his beard was plucked. And, and he said, yeah, but we've got new evidence. He says, uh, we have information now from, from the originals that the English, you can't get it in the English Bible. He doesn't you have go to an the original. Originals. He doesn't have an original. He's, not, he's selling a product. Yeah. That's all it is. He's selling a product. Let me say this very clearly, and I write about this in my KJB book as well as some other places. There are no originals anywhere on planet Earth. No original Greek or Hebrew Bibles anywhere on planet Earth. Let me go a step further. In 1604, 1607, all the way to 1611, when the translators gave us the King James Bible, there were no originals anywhere to be found at when, they, when they translated the Bible. See, everybody thinks that it was translated out of the originals. No. <laughs> there were no originals. Let me go a step further. And shock some more of you. When Jesus walked the earth, <laughs> there were no original Hebrew manuscripts anywhere, not in the temple, nowhere. They say, Doc, that, uh, and you know this better than, than I would, but they say that a papyra and the, the stuff that, <laughs> and the skins of animals that they wrote scriptures on, 100 years at best, they, they turned to dust. Even the sheepskin ones, I have a... I have a uh, I have a section out of one of the out of the Torah, uh, out of the Book of Deuteronomy. It's on sheepskin, uh, but if that's not kept uh, underneath a glass that protects from the UV rays, it will the ink will eventually dissipate, yeah. and the leather as well. But we're talking about a piece of linen. Yeah. 
and if that linen cloth had not been, if it's 2,000 years old, then it would have had to have been encased in a vacuum proof area in a UV protected uh, uh, encasement. Because I'm here to tell you, nothing would have still even been there. That it is not genuine. Yeah. Well, I agree, and I, and I, I, I. It's a shame, though, that it's being purported and as real because that just gives people something to worship other than Christ Himself. Well, here's what here's what he said to one person, or or somebody on there said, well, "I believe it's real." But, they, but, you know, several people so, say, oh, I believe it's hey, real. Hey, I can believe a lot of things. It doesn't make it real. Yeah, well, they, they believe in fallen angels flying around UFOs, yeah, too. Yeah, and they don't make that real. No, and uh, yeah. they've got no proof here. They're, they're just no, there is human no reasoning. Proof. Now, one person said, um, well, uh, if you think it's not real, try making one like this. Well, listen. I, Why do I want to make one like it? And there's oh, that's not that's faulty reason. That's not. I couldn't. Even I couldn't build an automobile. I couldn't build a car. Does that mean? Does that mean the car is from 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 out of space because I can't build one? Yeah. There's in other words, they're saying there's something about this this linen that couldn't have been reproduced by anybody, and that's, so therefore it had to be. No, that's not so. Uh, yeah. That's damn you know, it, it's a hoax. I can't make a fossil. But yet I have found fossils. That don't mean that the yeah. fossil is from a million years ago. No. Nope. Because they're not from a million no, years ago. No, they're not. Matter of fact, this last week we we had some new discoveries on the on the Paluxy River bank in our in our excavations. Uh, we found four Plesiosaurus tracks, 27 inches. We're talking about a dinosaur bird, 27 inch footprints. Amazing discovery. Yeah. And there's no way that you could make them because we just unearthed them. So, Doc, what would you say to, to our audience or anybody concerning this, this big hype that's you, come in? Hey, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something that tries to sidetrack people away from the whole purpose of the cross. The yeah. gospel is always going to be undermined. It's always going to be something out there to try to get your attention. Because a shroud, if it had been really the peace, so what? Yeah. It's the fact that it's an empty tomb. What the, that's what I was just going to say. It's not the shroud that proves the resurrection. No, it's, it's an empty, the empty tomb. tomb. Uh, and, and I mean, you go to your text in your King James Bible and you get the story, man. God sent an earthquake, opened it up, not to let Jesus out, but to let folks look in. Yep. He's already gone. Yep. Uh, he is not here. He is risen he's just risen. as He said. Yes. So, yep. but... Don't get caught up in this stuff. I, be no different than going to Brazil. We heard today in a missions conference, Dan, that we just finished at my church, about a missionary from Brazil. And, and in Brazil, they worship uh, an idol about so big, it's called the Black Mary. And supposedly, a few hundred years or so ago, a couple of, some fishermen are going to have a, they're trying to catch fish for a big meal. And their nets drag up a body. Uh, a, yeah, the, a, 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 the statue a, a with statue no head. A statue body. And then they said, well, and they cast their net back out again. And next thing you know, they got the head to it. And now they've got a, they've got a statue of, that's black uh, of Mary. And they worship yeah. Mary. No difference yeah. in that and the story you're talking about, the Shroud of Turin. Yeah. It's relics. They, they want something they can touch. Yep. They want something they can... It's something, it's something that becomes worshipped rather than, yeah. than the Lord himself. And the other thing they say, well, you can't prove that it's not real. <laughs> what kind of reasoning is that? That makes no sense. Yeah. I can't prove that the stars are, I can't prove that the star is not somebody's flashlight. I can't yeah. prove that. Yeah. Does that mean that they're right because I can't prove something? Yeah. Anyway, you have to, I have to prove to somebody what is right. I can't yeah. prove something that's wrong. No. Well, I mean, how do I prove that this is not the shroud that he wore? But the burden of proof is not on us. The burden of proof us. is on them to prove it is. Well, and they cannot. The scientists that have studied it, and there's been many scientists study it, and from the scientific standpoint, it is an impossibility for, for the blood matter on that linen 
to have existed to its extent as it is at the moment for 2,000 years without having been preserved in a manner in which would have preserved it. Now let me, let me ask you a question about the blood. I, don't, I personally don't believe any blood, not one drop, was left behind. I believe it's on the mercy seat. I agree. I agree. Doesn't that blow this thing right out of the yeah. water? There could not be any blood on, on his clothing left behind? Yeah. Well, he, he said he put his blood, uh, he offered it in the glory in the, at the mercy seat. Yeah. He turned the judgment seat, which is the top of the Ark of the Covenant, that two and a half inch tall gold rim. Uh, he, he turned what was called the judgment seat into the mercy seat when he applied his blood. Yeah. Yes. So well, I, I think he brought the, uh, honestly, Dan, I, I don't know how it, uh, God does it. When we get to glory, we'll have an understanding. But the blood in the veins of Jesus was not the same as the blood in your veins. Right. It was sinless. It was sinless it was blood. The, the Father's blood. And so it had to have come and taken back to where it was come from. So, so folks, if that made any sense to you, that blows this whole thing right out of the water. There is no blood on a linen cloth anywhere in the world that belongs to Jesus Christ. Because the, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It's the blood on the mercy seat, just yes. like the blood on the doorpost yeah. that saves us. Christ had, remember he told them, touch me not, I've not yet ascended to my yeah. Father. Somewhere in there, somewhere, uh, somewhere in this in process, time, Brian, the blood went to heaven. As the high priest, he performed the duty yeah. of taking his own sacrificial blood and yeah. applying it in the throne of heaven. Yes. So, yeah. It is a shame, though, that we would even have to be talking about... I think there are other issues that are much more important than this, but others have made it an important issue. And as you said earlier to, uh, in our conversation, I believe we owe it to our people that watch us uh, uh, what we think about what's being promoted out there. Now, I posted a comment. I usually do, almost never post on their page, but I just felt, I just felt, man, somebody's got to say something. And I, met, I, I was kind. I said, you know, fables. Let's get away from fables. Let's get back to Scripture. And they, they immediately took it off and, ban and blocked me, so I can't yeah. post. Which well, I'd funny. block you too anyway. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, no. No, I'm telling you, it's like the rest of the sci-fi junk and all this other stuff. Distraction. And it's not only a distraction, but it's a means don't get me wrong, folks. It takes money to operate a ministry. But I'm not going to gather your money by trying to sell you something that's a hoax that's not the truth. And this yeah. is making money. Mark yeah. my words, they're making money. And I promise you, folks, I promise you, that shroud of Turin is not real. That is no. not the face of Jesus. That is not his hair. That is not his body. That shroud was never, never touched the, the body of Jesus Christ. No. Now you take that or you leave that, whatever you want to do with it. Quit following after cunningly devised fables that people come yes. up with. Faith, for by faith, we need faith. We don't need to follow after fables, and you don't have to wonder if that's the shroud he was in. No. Uh, is somebody going to bring you a piece of the crown of thorns? Are we going to worship that? Are we going to say this was a yeah. thorn that stuck in his head? Yeah. Um, you know, where does this end? Yep. But, uh, but right out of the Roman church, I'll tell you, where, that's where Absolutely. this all came from. The yeah. relics and the, the worshiping yeah. of things that somebody touched and all that. Yeah. And uh, that is not of God. And you need to just... By the way, stay away from people pushing that stuff. How, many, how much are they going to push at us before we finally realize, you know, these people, they're not Bible believers. I, I need to quit following them. So, and listen, if you don't think we're Bible believers, you shouldn't follow us either. That's right. And, uh, Doc, I just, I just believe we needed to say something. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I was reluctant at it because... I don't think we ought to have to spend time on such a nonsensical subject, but they've made it a subject yeah. that's we feel like we feel like at least the folks that care enough yeah. to watch us. To well, I think people. How we feel about I think it. people care about what we say. They want. They like to hear our yeah. view on things. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm not mad at anybody. Oh no, I'm disappointed. No. I'm Very disappointed, disappointed in the prophecy world because they have a they have a much much bigger voice than we may ever have a dream to have. 
and yet they're not using it in a direction that I the, think would be most profitable. The entire prophecy world has lost its mind. It seems to be. Sci-fi, fairy tales, yeah. Greek mythology. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on, they're talking about Thor, the, the Marvel character. He, he, he was a fallen angel, yeah. he was a Nephilim or something. You've got to be kidding me. He's a fictitious character yeah. in a fairy tale is what he is. <laughs> Just like uh, Merlin the Magician. I heard yeah. him... I heard him say that he was he was a Nephilim. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks, it's not real. Yeah. That simple. All right. Well, if you if you enjoy this kind of thing and you like to to hear our view on things, punch that subscribe button down there. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the little bell if you want to get alerts. Share this on your pages and with other people, and uh, and and we're going to keep. Keep plugging away here. But we're going to do our best to stay with Bible prophecy. Yep. We're going to stay with the King James Bible, the Word of God, and we're going to say more about that in the TV program because we're going to we're going to continue our subject about the uh, the end times church and what the church gave up and what the church has lost. And by the way, you can see clearer as day on these programs that we're talking about. You can see the church has lost something. We've lost our compass. Yeah. And uh, this is the compass right here, it the is. Word of God. Yeah. And without that, you just go in circles and you follow cunningly devised, devised fables. fables. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. That Amen. trumpet's going to sound one of these days, and we're getting out of here. Amen. And I hope you're saved. I hope you know Jesus. I hope you've been born again. If you need any help with that, contact us. But until next time, keep your eyes on them skies. Amen.